Well, folks, well, I'm way up in the hills here, and I uh, wasn't planning on doing a video, but I'm going to. So that little guy, the chainsaw, chainsaw, has been idling for an honest four or five minutes after I did a whole bunch of cutting. Looks like I finally figured it out. Isn't that a nice idle? We're sitting there for four, four, we'll say five minutes. trail clearing I got out here late and uh, yeah it just started snowing like a bugger it slowed down now but I can't even see what I'm doing okay so what I did I did a whole I, I said I had it fixed and I thought I did took it out the other night on this trail when I did that unboxing video and it actually started acting up at the end once after I cut with it for about I'd say about 15 minutes before it used to act up after about two or three minutes you could never make it idle no matter what you did to this saw anyways I took her back into the hangar again last night tore it down found I think either a couple more air leaks where it would have been and uh, eliminated a gasket added some moto seal I'll do a full video on this saw but uh, I did one other thing too uh, last night but I'm pretty sure it was the the intake leak Anyway, it's running really good. I was cutting with it for a bit. It, it leaned out on me for a sec. So with this muffler mod, you really got to run them rich because once you start working them real hard, they lean out once that exhaust gets really hot. So you really got to watch out for that when you do these uh, big muffler mods. This is a pretty big hole for that little thing. Look at it, just idling perfect. Was, uh, turn out the high jet a little bit when it leaned out on me. Anytime you're cutting and they die on you, that's bad. They're, they're leaning out. You don't want to keep cutting like that. Flop the throttle a few times to throw some fuel at that piston and the cylinder. And, and uh, after you've done flap it a few times, then you can just let it idle and uh, turn your adjustment screw. Okay, let's set the camera up. We'll do some cutting. I'll show you. Happy folks! Very happy. Right on it. Finally got this thing running right. It's crazy because we'll do a uh, we'll start it up after. See if it starts up hot. Everybody's buying these things and they're oh yeah, they run good, they run good. Well, unless they run like what you just seen there, they're not running good. 
you got to keep uh, hitting the throttle to keep them going that's not running good and uh, as it turned out this thing had actually two major air leaks that did not show up with a pressure test no no uh, no air leaks pressure and vacuum until it got warm and so honestly these saws right now there's tons of them out there and I know some run or, or I don't know I'd have to see them out here see how they they run out here but but uh I know there's a lot of guys that actually been saying they can't get these things to run right. Like they're just, what they say is they, uh, the same thing that I had was they tune it. They try to tune the, tune the low jet and then it's too uh, lean so or too rich. And so then they got to crank up the idle screw. This thing just has the idle screw just barely in. If you got that idle screw cranked in too far, that means you've got that flap opening and now it's actually sucking fuel through not only those three little tiny holes for the L jet, the low jet, it's also sucking fuel from the high jet. It's not supposed to at an idle. It's supposed to just mainly draw off of the uh, the three little screws mostly uh, on the uh, on the low jet. It's not until you you, re you speed up the RPMs where it should have enough vacuum to suck it up the high jet, right? So that was the problem. And uh, well, that thing's been sitting for a little bit. Let's uh, let's see if she fires up. Um, I'll just try it without touching anything at first. Okay, want it to go there. So then turn the choke on and then off. That basically leaves the choke off, but leaves it into a bit of a fast idle. fixed that last night so basically i'm ready to do a whole bunch more cutting with this saw now and i'm ready to, to do my final review like a full video on it which will explain uh, it'll explain everything i did to this saw to make it run right because i mean there's no reason i'm not saying this is a professional saw but the way they come there's no way you could ever cut with this thing you know if you had a tree cutting business and if you watch that guilty of treason show he uh, he actually used one of them and it was constantly dying on him and the rpms were going up and down and they actually talk about it at the end of the video uh, i forget what the other fellow is it west coast uh, i forget the other guy's uh, name he ports ch uh, chainsaws and stuff and he's actually saying that uh that uh, he can't get it tuned either. And he was explaining it the same way that mine was acting. So I know they have the ability uh, to run right. But actually, it wasn't just one thing I changed. It was about five. Five different things I changed. Every single one of them made a difference. So pretty impressed with the outcome. And uh, I think I'm just going to get the old soup mix out. And just because uh, I want to just see how it's running. Do a little bit of cutting with it. But I'm not going to clear trail. We're done. I'm not going to. I got a long ways to go. It's all uphill. Pretty steep country here. I'm just going to head back. Get my wood stove going. I actually uh, left my wood stove off. So it's not going to be nice and warm when I get home. No heat source other than a wood stove. But it's just been so warm for uh, December. I mean, this is, this is crazy weather for Canada in December. I've never seen it. Today was. It had to be 10 degrees outside right now. We're, we're just couple days before Christmas, right? So. snowing so hard right now that uh i can't even do anything with my phone because it's just so full of snow 
but we'll continue on here. Well, folks, I cut that whole time. It was just snowing like a bugger. And uh, I was gonna get the soup mix out. Haven't, haven't got it out yet. I decided I wanted to see how much uh, bar oil that thing would use to a tank of fuel. <clears throat> and so anyways, I went up there. I've never really cut much with a top handle, but um, yeah, I cleared this all out here. Pretty, uh, pretty nice little unit. Anyways, it ran flawless, and then at the end, I noticed it just started running a bit lean. Of course, I checked, it was right out of fuel. So it worked really good, the way I got it set up. But, it's, uh, at least it's not snowing now, it's, it's dead calm again, that storm rolled over. There we go. And actually, I've got the, uh, the bar oiler turned right down, and it, it oils plenty good the way it is. Um, you see in there? Anyways, it's right dry. And then I'll show you the bar oil. Yeah, it definitely got the torture test there. It worked great. Yeah, it's about half half full on the bar oil. Maybe a little less than half actually. But I got the oiler turned right off, like to the lowest setting. But the chain didn't loosen up that whole time. It rolls nice and smooth. It's just perfect tension actually. So that's good. You'd think a cheap uh, saw like that, the chain would stretch a lot, and, but it's been good. Okay. Well, I think I'm still going to head home. It's getting late. Okay, folks. Over and out. Have a good one. Stay warm.